Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie, and I want to welcome you back to Beginning C Sharp with Unity video tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be reviewing everything that we've covered in this past section. But before we do that, we're going to jump into your last task. In your last task, I asked you to create an interface called iPersistible. And what I wanted you to do is was to declare a simple method called save within this interface. And then I wanted you to implement this interface throughout some of your objects inside or some of the scripts inside of this project. Then inside your game manager, I wanted you to then loop through those objects and call the save method on them. So let's do this right now. The first thing we're going to do is create our interface. So I'm going to select these interfaces folder here, and then I'm going to select create C sharp script like so. And then I'm going to call this I persistible. I'm just going to open up mono develop. And here I'm just going to select everything in this class and just simply declare my interface. And inside here, we're going to have one simple method, like I mentioned, and this is called save. Now we need to implement this method on our various objects. So in my scripts, you can see we have the alien, a player, and a turret. Let's start with the alien. You can see here we have an alien is implementing the I shootable interface. I'm going to put a comma here, and now it will implement the I persistable interface. And we're just going to write alien saves. Next, we're going to do this to the player object as well. And you can see we have an interface already implemented, so we're going to delete that. And instead, we're going to have this implement the iPersistible interface. And we'll write simply the player saves. In this case, we don't have access to the debug log method. So up here, we're just going to put in using Unity Engine, like so. And this gives us access to those methods. And here is our Hello World script. I'm just going to delete that for now and just delete these also. And this is just a warning saying that we're not using this alien, so might as well get rid of that too. Okay, finally, let's get to the turret. And this is a type of eye shootable, and now it's a type of eye persistable. And you may be wondering, why would you want to save the turret? Well, if you actually save the game, say if the user was playing your game, and they tapped, say, the home button on their phone, and they went out to their main iOS or whatever their main Android, you might want to save the state because sometimes iOS will terminate your app in the background. So by saving everything, the player can then simply tap on the icon and your game will simply restart again from its last position. There we go. So now we save the turret. Now in our game manager, we're going to declare a private I persistible array. And we're just going to have three elements. So we already have an alien one. We'll take that and we have a turret and let's just create a new player. And the player is in the beginning C sharp namespace. So we'll add that as well. And now that I have all this, and now that I have all these objects, I'm going to add them to the saved items array.
And this is just a debug error from our hello world, but we don't need that. I'm going to return back to my game manager. And now within our on disable, instead of I shootable, we'll say persistable in saved items like so. And then we'll simply remove that and we'll call save. We have to change this type here. And we'll simply call the save like so. Now we're passing in an alien, a turret, and a player into one array. But again, because they're all sharing the same interface, we don't necessarily need to worry about the type. We're more concerned about the method that that inter interface contains. Let's, let's run this now. Here we are, we're gonna select our game manager and now we're gonna deselect it. Now let's open up the console and you can see alien saves, turret saves, and player saves. So at long last, we reached the end of another section. And this, is, this section was really important. It introduced you to the concept of object-oriented programming. Previously, if you had just started coding based on what you learned in this series without getting involved with object-oriented programming, your, your programs would be very long, you would have lots of duplication, and they would quickly become unmanageable. With object-oriented programming, you saw how we can take these blocks of code and basically shape them into metaphors that can do things. And these metaphors are what we can pass around and have them interact with each other. The very first object I introduced you to is called the struct. And a struct is a value type object. And you're gonna be learning about what a value type object is in the next section. But for now, just understand it's a value type like a number is a value type. Again, don't worry too much about it now. A struct is a great way to group related data. And you could easily just take, say, a first name, last name, and so forth, and add it into one object and then pass that object around. Of course, by adding fields onto your struct, you needed to learn about access control. And this taught you how to create public, publicly available data versus private data. And you learned about the difference between why you'd want something public and why you'd want something private. Now, of course, once we've covered access control, I showed you methods and how you can use methods to provide a common way for other objects to inter interface with your own object. And this is a key component of object-oriented programming. It's what we like to call data hiding, meaning we provide ways that other objects can access our data, but we contain that data. We don't make it accessible to everything so that other objects can't change the internal state of our objects. Then, of course, I introduce you to fields and properties and what that meant. And fields and properties are a way of shortcutting code. They basically allow us to create properties inside of our objects in that these properties would actually create the getters and setters for us. And they're very useful. Then you learned about constructors, and these were ways for you to create your object. Now we covered constructors on a very basic level. In the next, in the, in the next section, you'll learn more about constructors and how and what effects they have with your objects. Then I covered interfaces, and interfaces were a way of defining a common behavior that many objects can share. And of course. By utilizing interfaces, you were introduced to polymorphism, which is a way of taking objects and changing how they look and behave based on common behavior, such as interfaces. Now, if you have any questions or if you're feeling a little shaky about some of these concepts, definitely rewatch this section again because object oriented programming is incredibly important, especially when working with Unity. Now, before we move into our next section, I'd like to cover some best practices when working with structs. When I started this section, I thought it would be a good idea to introduce you to structs. Oftentimes, structs are overlooked and people will just de default to using classes. But structs are also a valuable tool in your, in your toolbox. While structs provide us a bunch of functionality, they should be used sparingly. In fact, 
generally speaking, you're not going to be using a lot of structs in your code. But that said, here are some best practices when using structs. First, a good best practice when using structs is to make sure your structs are immutable, meaning these structs aren't going to change at all. Let's say, for instance, you're working with a leaderboard, and this leaderboard contains a player name, a score, and a ranking. Well, that leaderboard entry is not going to change. And what you you may want to do is encapsulate that within a struct, and then you can get that information from a struct. And doing so makes it much more easier to understand. You also want to keep your structs small. You don't want to have a lot of stuff in them. What happens is when you pass around a struct, all those values within that struct is copied with that struct, very much like a, a number. Basically, what this means, if you have a struct with a lot of data, if you pass that struct around, that data is going to be copied. So now you're going to have duplicate amounts of data. And as you can see, it can quickly spiral out of control. So you really want to keep your structs small. Also, you want to avoid doing anything that involves polymorphism with structs, as polymorphism can ultimately change the behavior, as we learned earlier in this series. It can make the structs unstable. Now, as you go about in your game development career and you start working with a lot of these objects, you'll get a good sense of when to use something and when not to. In fact, you'll see that Unity itself leverages structs in a lot of different ways. And by knowing about them now, is you'll understand exactly what's going on when you start using the, the, these structs. Okay, enough about structs. Now we're going to move into classes. And this section is what I like to call intermediate object-oriented programming. We're going to build on everything that we covered in this past section and level up our skills to work with classes. In the first video, we're going to be covering what a class is, and this is the difference between a reference type and a value type. You'll also be introduced to garbage collection and what that actually means in the context of our games. Next, you'll learn about inheritance, and you'll see how classes use inheritance to share code. Then you'll learn about abstract classes and what that actually means to have an abstract class and an abstract methods as well. Then I'll be covering overriding, such as when you want a child class to override the functionality of its parent class. And from there, we'll be covering overloading, which is similar, but a little bit different. For instance, if you want to create different method names based on various arguments and so forth. And finally, we're going to revisit constructors, and you'll learn exactly how they work with classes and some of the implications there are when working with constructors. There's a lot to cover, but believe it or not, we're halfway through at this point. In a few sections later, you'll start to really leverage the power of C Sharp and make the games you've always wanted to create. All right, everyone, that's the end of this episode. Thanks again for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, feel free to give it a good thumbs up. All right, everyone, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. See you then.